Okay, let's see. Go to YouTube. Okay, type in search bar 1313. Let's see what we get here. Okay, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. 1313 Nightmare Mansion. Hmm, check this out. Click here, and what have we got? Uh huh, yeah, interesting. Uh -huh. Okay, it. Oh my holy, Captain Jack Hartness. Oh my, oh god, god, unsee, unsee, unsee. Oh. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Hola y saludos a todos. Así que vacío que otro. Slice of sci-fi dot com. The really sad thing is, is that we're actually giving that stupid thing more coverage than it deserves. Yeah, but, that's for uh, sure. Well, I'm Michael R. Menengay. I'm Brian Brown. I am a Cole Hahn four-inch red patent leather heel. That is awesomeness right Very there. Nice. I'm Jack Wagon. <laughs> Jack, Jack Harkness Wagon? That works. Okay. Okay, whatever. Uh, Megan's ear. <laughs> Matt Lather. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. and there's the crew for the day, and this is the Slice of Sci-Fi listener feedback show. It's only yeah. taking us how many episodes to get used to saying that? Uh, well, still well, not quite there. It's we'll not going to get week. there. I'll blow it next week, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's fine. You can call the voicemail line at 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735, and uh, add to the fun. Zombie Ray Bradbury. Oh, oh too soon. <laughs> too soon. Yeah. Too soon. I totally disagree. That's awesome. No. <laughs> kind of sad now. Yeah. Even well, more sad than I know. Harsh, got... harsh his groove. We yeah. actually, uh, we we give uh, Ray a little bit of we love. We talk next. about him. Uh, yep. Yeah, listen next weekend. Uh, we'll, you'll hear a little bit more about it. Yeah. So, uh, with Thor's comment about Loki being adopted be more or less offensive if Thor's reason for saying that was well, if he hadn't been adopted and he was, you know, my father's genuine kid, he would have killed more than 80 people. There you oh. go. Oh. You know, it's all about how many you kill. Perspective. That's right. Prescient. Hey, Slicers. It's Matt from Washington, D.C. I was listening to episode 459, and uh, one of you guys made a comment about how you didn't think that uh, SpaceX, the Elon Musk space transport company, was going to have much of the future uh, because all their contracts were with NASA. Well, the fact is they've actually got about 40 launches under contract, and only, I think, 17 are with NASA. Mm -hmm. The rest are with a whole range of different companies like Intelsat to put up new TV satellites or, you know, GPS satellites or all the rest of it, as well as with other government customers uh, like the Defense Department. So I think that there really is a future for a company like this, especially when you look at the fact that, you know, people just want to put stuff into space. And whether it's a spy satellite or uh, whether it's, uh, you My know, the wife. next generation of satellite <laughs> phones, you know, I, I think the market's a lot bigger than NASA. I Thanks. agree. We're putting Tim no. into space next yeah. week. Mm. What, what I said is I said is that most of their money is coming from government contracts is what I said. That's mm. always a bad thing. It is. And I said the fact is, is, that, is that that is where all their eggs are. Yes, it's a good starting point, but it's going to be many, many, many years before they start getting private companies and that sort of thing mm. to, to, to fork up that kind of cash. Yeah. The only people who can afford it, governments right now. Not the government of Europe, but the, our government can. And China, I think China is going to be the next one, honestly. But China's trying to do their own. They got their, their stuff, own. Yeah. They do. Yeah, they don't play well with others. Yeah. But still, I, I think that was really my point: is that the, they have a lot of eggs in the government basket, really. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, well, they're 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 doing it. Yeah, though. I know. I'm I mean, not saying they're, I'm not saying they're not. But I'm just saying I'm saying as a, as a long term and a, you know a financial. That's the low game. hanging fruit, yeah. is what I think. Well, it's so. it's an easy target. Exactly. I mean, it really is. Uh, but it's, but it's a concern. Well, yeah. yeah so. I mean, because quite honestly, every year, whatever you think you're doing is probably going to change. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the government's like, uh, no, we don't have money this year. Forget yeah. it. I was just trying to bring a reality check to to everybody's squeeze. Brian's such a downer. Yeah, no, I'm the, no. I'm the grounder. Yeah, downer. I'm the grounder. I'm pragmat yeah, pragmatist. 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 Cynical Pragmatist. bastard. Yeah, Pragmatist. Cynical bastard. Cynical bastard. That works. I wear that title proudly. Thank you. Indeed. Hey guys, it's Matt from Washington, D.C. Again? I was listening to Slowly. episode 460 and He's uh, up. I heard one of you mention uh, Robopocalypse, the mm. novel be, by Daniel H. That'd be me again. 
Um, I'm Brian. I read it as well, and uh, I <laughs> thought it was really interesting in that it was a uh, new take on the sort of traditional robots take over the world trope, yes. integrating all the technology that's either in our hands, like our cell phones, um, or cars. you know, coming around the corner, mm-hmm. like uh, self-driving cars. Yeah. What I was really excited to know is that Steven Spielberg is attached to direct it, and it has an estimated release Ooh. date of April 25th, 2014. Oh. So I'll be looking forward it to catching it for me. Thanks, yeah. It's going to be a while, so you Spielberg. might as well just pick up the book and read it, uh, dude. Spielberg really always ends everything so darn happy. It drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's true for the most part. It, although I do kind of wonder, like, if if on our planet we have, like, movies about, like, robot aliens taking or robots taking over. You think on robot planets they have movies about, meat like, bags. Human, yeah, meat yeah. bags taking over? <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm getting their fluids on us. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> exactly. Just curious. That's, that's, that. Those are my nightmares. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Bodily so, fluids aren't your nightmares. I know. So I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> I'm literally not going to touch it. Actually. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I, you know, it's uh, this little meme thing that we've got from Sean from Edwards has oh, been yeah. kind of getting interesting. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what's happening with that, and then I think we should do some Sweet Leaf. Okay. Meanwhile, aboard an orbiting derelict chunk of what used to be Nigel Blackwood's ship, the H.G. Wells, Sean from Mojave Spaceport and a human calling himself Skiznod continue to try to contact help and get some systems functioning again. <laughs> So wait, this Lance guy just took over the multiverse news like that? Yeah, well, Nigel ran into some financial trouble. Still not quite sure how that happened. And then, uh, this Neutron guy kind of came out of nowhere. Annoyance at first, and then he <clears throat> slowly started taking over everything. Of course, it didn't help when Nigel blew up the ship. That just isn't right. Hey, look. This looks like a prototype lab. Yeah, I- yeah, good find. We should be able to find some useful tools in here. Hopefully some kind of transponder or something. But it's huge. Split up. Stay within your shot. Oh, this place is a mess. Wait, wait a minute. What's this? Cool, a robot. I've always wanted a robot. Let's see if I can turn it on. Oh, Systems Online? Name? Uh, Skiznot. Very well then, my name is Skiznot. Oh, no, wait, I I thought you were asking my name. My name is Skiznot. Confirm identification? It's Skiznot, but... Oh, no, wait. ID confirmed, I am Skiznot. No, we can't both be Skiznot, that'll confuse people. Well, you should have thought of that before you named me. The Adventures of Sweetleaf. Hi, Sam. Have you seen Summer anywhere? Mike said she wants to talk to me. Sorry, Clipper Bell. She's gone out for a bit. I hope Sweetleaf hasn't gotten into trouble again. I think she just wants to ask about pictures for the contributor page on the Slice site. Sweetleaf and I can't be photographed. We won't show up in pictures. Like vampires? We're fae. It's different. Sweetleaf said Mike was going to ask the listeners if anyone had drawn pictures or paintings of us so we could use them for promo pic. I hope you get some good ones. So how do you like it here so far? Yeah, everyone's real nice. I'm, but I'm really anxious to get working on the boards. <laughs> and Mike keeps making excuses to do it himself, right? Yeah, he hired me as a producer, but I don't think he trusts me. Don't worry, that's just Mike. Well, I want to pull my weight around here. Have you thought about becoming an on-air personality? Me on the show? Sure, why not? Maybe it would give me something to do around here besides keeping Sweetleaf out of trouble. How's Sweetleaf doing? He's running our new ad campaign, isn't he? Yeah, he's BS, Mike, into thinking he knows what he's doing. Good morning, Sweetleaf. Morning, Mike. Hey, thanks so much for uh, stepping up and volunteering to be our advertising coordinator. We've been needing somebody to kind of fill this position. No problem. I can see you needed help. And, well, I'm the man for the job, right? Getting the word out on Slice Sci-Fi is, of course, our primary objective. However, I do have one question about this magazine that you are running an ad for Slice of Sci-Fi in, uh, The Sensual Wing. Yeah, I got a good price because their circulation isn't that big. It's a niche market for the kind of frustrated basement dwellers who listen to Slice. Uh, I don't know, Sweetleaf. That that doesn't sound like... Hey, this is a classy publication. High art, you might say. Oh, well, if it's for art, then of course. That, that makes all the difference in the world. 
Is there any possibility I could get a free subscription to that? You're the boss. I'll bring it right on in. Um, but there is a small problem with the first issue. There are a few pages stuck together. Don't worry about it. Just a quality control issue. Hey guys, this is Brian Collick from Taipei again. So I recently saw Men in Black 3. It was an okay movie, not good, not bad, just okay. Uh, that's not why I called. Why I, why I called was because um, after I exited the theater, my mind suddenly went back to the controversy, in heavy quotes controversy, surrounding Marvel, Marvel's Avengers and the adoption thing. And suddenly I started to wonder how many right arm amputees are going to be so pissed after seeing Men in Black 3? I think my mind skipped ahead to the new Batman movie coming out in a couple of months. And, um, wow, if you are a right arm amputee who was adopted and has a British accent and maybe a breathing problem that forces you to wear a mask, this summer for you is going to suck. <laughs> Oh. Now, 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 Bane has a speech impediment. That's, That's right. really what it is. Come on. Let's pile wow. another thing on there. Sure. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, you're doing it all wrong. It's, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's, That's what awesome. it's more like. It's yeah. awesome. Awesomeness. I find myself needing to go have a drink. Because Me too. I kind of actually agree with Tim Adamick for a change. Oh, um, the horror. The society and the silly crap that we're doing and being super PC. Um, you know, you guys are going on about all the different variations of, oh, he was adopted. Have any of you ever had an older brother? That's all I freaking heard. No, of course it wasn't true, but, you know, what the hell? That's his excuse for getting getting rid of me or something. Huh. Yeah, we hmm. all live through that. That's that, that's old news. Yeah. See, it, Sibling rivalry. Yeah, for me, it was my sister and I would both swore we were adopted because we were like, <laughs> our parents are too weird. We can't be like them. Oh, so, we were aw we were awesome so my, kids. We tried to kill each other. It was great. Yeah, my sister and I tried to do the same thing. Yeah. She tried to kill me with a telephone one time. Hit me, <laughs> hit me upside the, you just want no. She hit me upside the head with a temple uh, and knocked me out literally cold on the ground. That explains I came to, so I, much. I know, and I came to her crying over me, going, "Don't be dead." Don't be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I chopped my she finger. Did. I chopped my sister's finger off with a hatchet. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh. I pushed a tree over on her. Uh, did she you really ran... chop her finger off? Yeah, I really. Oh did. my goodness. Um, I actually. Uh, um, she ran over me with a uh, with a motorcycle. Uh, let me see. She ran over me with a car. Um, well, yeah, we were we were great kids. I never. <laughs> wow. I, I mean, you know, we fought, but it was it wasn't like that. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. I was I was about to tell my stories. I'm done. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you win, Mike. I, I helped my Sorry. sister sneak in the house when she was a lot past curfew. I mean. Wow. My you, sister made fun of me. <laughs> you yeah. all lose. Mike wins. Right? <laughs> Mike, Mike's got right? it. Mike's got it. Okay. No, there are inappropriate times for listening to things like Slice. Oh. Um, well, for one thing, by the way, um, in yeah. Canada, you're they no longer allowed to talk hockey while operating. I did seriously. Really? You know, a lot of the hospitals have put in rules <laughs> about that. <laughs> um, not, you didn't well, say anything about sci-fi. That's the way it works. I listen to Slice on my iPod and while I was taking the subway, and uh, it actually helped me quite a bit. I used to get a lot of seats because people moved away from me while I was cracking up, and they couldn't tell what I was laughing at. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't that be an awesome story? I lost my spleen because of the Rangers. <laughs> right? <laughs> the Canucks, usually. Yeah. yeah the Maple yeah. Leafs, something yeah. like that. Ouch. Hey, Slicers, it's Pain in the Ricker. Hey, I'm calling uh, to drop a bit of theory onto you guys. Yes. Uh, now that Marvel took Lay the time down. to build up uh, through a series of movies with the Iron Man uh, movies and Hulk. the Hulk and mm -hmm. Thor and whatnot to culminate in the Avengers, yep. uh, now they're going to do another set of movies that are going to culminate to Avengers 2. So with the storylines that have taken place over the years through the Avengers and you know through the Marvel comic books, um, I personally think that they could probably build up to uh, the Secret Wars. Um, oh yeah, to definitely. Or Avengers two, and then oh. Avengers three, they could build up to Civil War, Ooh. Uh, which would then be still connected between the two. Or they could build up to Civil War, 
for Avengers 2, and then they could build uh, up to Secret Wars. Uh, that way, Ooh. what was revealed at the end mm. of the Avengers remains all connected. Now, I don't no. think I don't think they'll do something like that because for them, long range planning on these movies is pretty short range. Yeah, you, no. like they 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 currently do not have a plan for what Avengers two would be, right? right? Because they don't even know who's going to be helming it or writing well, it or whatever. It'd be nice if they thought that far ahead. What's but interesting they did, though? No, I mean, uh, can I go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, but they did though. We we talked three years ago about the fact that they had this plan to sit there and and do um, Iron Man two. Yes, and then Hulk. But and that then, was the big was plan. They did strokes. not know yeah. what the plot of the Avengers was going to be. Jo- they had to hire Joss, and Joss had to write it before they but knew. Any time during that, if any of these movies sucked, it would have been derailed. Over. Absolutely. Mm, that's point. And here's point, the though. interesting thing is that if uh, if, if Spider Man does really really great, if uh, you know they want to kind of incorporate X Men because uh, we had Spider Man in in uh, Avengers, we uh, we saw Wolverine in Avengers. I mean, mm-hmm. it's po- it, yeah. can we can we merge these universes completely? Would that be like the ultimate geekgasm yes. if ever? But uh, can I mean, you fit all that in a movie? Oh, but, no. but then no, also, but you could definitely do War, spinoffs maybe. of pro- properties on with the that. on the yeah. opposite side of the comics aisle. Right, there's Justice League talk now too. There you go. Mm-hmm. Right, there's which, been Justice League talk for a while. But yes. now that Avengers is so huge, right. suddenly there people are are they going to follow the Avengers yeah. model because it's been so successful? They, you know, the, it, a, Hollywood is a bandwagon place. If they, something is big, mm-hmm. everybody else wants to do their own version. But of when it comes to their movie properties they've only done two decently mm-hmm. i know and i mean batman mm-hmm. obviously and and you can and make a case you can batman. make a case for no. superman as being halfway decent well they're redoing uh, superman right now so if that's successful halfway. i yeah. think they're going to segue that into some sort but, of yeah. justice league all the other stuff ramp up the other thing about all the other it's stuff been crappy i know but crap. they're under they're under pressure now to do something great and fabulous and justice mm-hmm. league yeah. could be it and the scary part is is that that's the problem with hollywood and the thing that always pisses me off about them is nobody there wants to be first but everybody's got to be second yeah and well, it, so true. so you get something that's mildly hot and everybody else is cloning it. Yep. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, we had something great. How about we do something else great instead of five more of the same? And the clones are like multiplicity, right? Yeah, exactly. They're all like not quite as good. As yours. And pretty soon they're the all in a corner one. drooling on each yeah. other wearing diapers. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> Michael Keaton right there. So true. Awesome. Hey, Slicers. Milwaukee Rinse went here. The girlfriend and I are getting real excited about the upcoming pool Ooh. party. Hopefully, Are most of you guys will be there. We'll mm-hmm. get to meet. Nah, Yay. Um, right. I'm not going to be here. We're doing a little <laughs> clothes shopping and things like that now. Quick question for you. How many pairs of long johns do you think we'll need to bring for a <laughs> seven-day stay out in Arizona? Every one of them. You want to double up for one. Yeah, so right. you want to make sure you at least double up, maybe even triple up for that matter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, and I so, recommend a parka. Parka. Uh, there you and, go. And, and the babushka hat. Don't forget the babushka hat. A survival parka, specifically. One that's going to go down to about the your neoprene. North, neoprene. North, a North Face. You need North oh, yeah, Face. There you absolutely. go. Neoprene. Definitely. I'm just telling you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a wetsuit for the pool. It's like practically freezing. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We got the Zamboni on it. Hey, Slicers, it's Pain in the Ricker. I'm five hours in to a seven-hour watch of the Venus Transit. Oh, I gotta tell yes. You, I am pretty absolutely cool, wasn't it? enjoying it. Yeah, it is I fantastic. It. And I got to tell you, you know, if you guys haven't seen this, uh, wh- hang on a second. Something's, <laughs> something's going on here. My vision is getting blurry. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, God. Use your sunglasses. Okay. All right. Now this is, okay. Um, I can't see. <laughs> uh, I don't you're know what in the world is going on. Okay, you're su- really not supposed to look here. directly um, I really at can't it. See. Uh, these goggles, they can't protect my eyes. They're not working. <laughs> uh, the goggles do nothing. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> so you sad. shouldn't look Bummer. directly at it. Okay, so hands up. How many people actually watched it and didn't cheat and do it on the inter- internet? That, right how's here. that cheating? That's watching it. No, right it's that's not the yes, same. It is. I, it is watching I got it. to wear Brett's welding helmet and yeah. look at the little spot on the sun. I, I actually did the pinhole thing. It's yeah. real simple yeah. just to poke the pinhole simple and do it on a car. And you can, I it's easy. totally dug the hole. I, I did. I, we used the welding helmet, in my, and I had my polarized sunglasses on. I literally, for like 15 minutes, just watched this it thing. It is just, it was mesmerizing. I felt so ridiculously tiny right then. And, and, and it is, it's, it's an event. If you, if you missed it, you 
you really missed something. I mean, this is something that will, is more rare than the Halley's Comet. It is. Mm-hmm. It, it it will not come again for... 115 years. 15, yeah. It, it, so. it, it, not in your lifetime, let's put it that way. Right. Well, so, I mean, honestly, a full solar eclipse is pretty rare, too, unless you're at the right place at the right time. You plan exactly. to be yeah. there. Because, I mean, we had uh, pretty close to a good, good chunk of it here. Partial here. Mm-hmm. But yeah. if you're up at Flagstaff, you got to see the full thing, yeah. mm-hmm. which was pretty incredible as well. It was pretty I, good uh, here. It was yeah. 85, 90%. It was, it was really a nice it was, show as it well. It was so. really dark. <laughs> yeah, it's, been, it's actually been a really good year for astronomical events. I think. It's because it's 2012 and we're all dying in December. Absolutely. Oh, so it's, it's, they're all day. lining oh, no, up. No. What? What? There was a psych out by the Mayans. They found new calendars. We're good. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Psych. Hey, Slicers. Clay from Canada. Have you guys ever watched the show uh, Full Metal Jousting? <laughs> uh, oh, no. It's oh, yes. fascinating. Like, you know, you got actual uh-huh. modern Crazy day people? jousters. Crazy. I'm just bringing this up because they were just in my hometown oh. and we saw the Knights of Valor doing some actual real life jousting. And Is this blood? isn't, you know, showbiz stuff. They... They're crazy. Yes. One of the guys Absolutely. knocked off and knocked unconscious. This stuff's incredible. The, I just wanted to tell you guys, this this is a show you guys, if you're not watching, you should be. Th- this stuff pretty much makes the SEA look like a bunch of pussies. So, Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Pretty Serious. much. Yeah, words over there. No, but it's, it's, it's the truth, man. <laughs> it really is true. They're not buffer swords. They're actually on full-on horses. And They're doing real jousting. Yes. Like crazy people. Like, like, <laughs> wow. like, like people soon to like have concussions and brain damage. Broken, broken, broken limbs. limbs. Are they broken playing bones? queen while they're doing it? I no. hope so. No. I'm not forget it. Uh, no. Well, they're going to start thinking they actually are in medieval yeah. times. Medieval yeah. times. There was an old movie with Ed Harris where they were jousting on motorcycles. Oh, I remember, I remember that. what it was. But I Ed remember Harris? that. Ed I remember Harris. seeing that. Yeah, and it was he was kind of like a, a King Arthur reborn. <laughs> It was a very interesting uh, old it movie. It was odd. It was it back was, in the 70s. Yeah, it was I'm, definitely. I'm going to look up the IMDb in between little All right. things okay. here. Do that. Hey, guys. Uh, I know that uh, Sippy is the root of all evil, and uh, no foxes. usually they <laughs> do deserve the blame they get, but this time they were falsely accused. They didn't actually cancel Sanctuary. Yeah, uh, it was I heard the that. production studio that did their blue screens and provided their camera. Oh, really? Yes. After all these years of getting their experience from making the show, they decided to go into movies and want to really crank up the price that they were going to charge. Oh. he actually wanted to do another two years. Uh, thank you and Bummer. have a good day. Wow, I did not know that. That makes much yeah, more it, sense. It, yeah. It's really interesting. And I. I I'd love to get the gang from uh, Sanctuary back on yeah, the Amanda, show again and Amanda, have them talk yeah. to. So it's Night Riders. That's Night Riders. Riders. Eighty one. I was right. Wow. Yeah. They that's ha- right. Have David the Hassel movie poster it? is hilarious. Yeah. A medieval reenactment troupe finds it increasingly difficult to keep their family like group together with pressure from local law enforcement, interest <laughs> from entertainment agents, and growing sense of delusion from their leader. Ed Harris, definitely. Camelot is a state of mind. Yes. Is the tagline on it. <gasps> Camelot is a state of mind? That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, Sav- Tom Savini's in it, too. Ooh. <laughs> wow. I got, now I'm going to have to go find it and watch right? it again. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, Pat Talman's in it, too. Really? Oh, oh, that's in it? Yeah. Oh, are you kidding? All that's right, wow. all right. Well, all right, I'll have to go. I'm going to so, hit her up. All right, let's Alrighty. go. You know what? We need a geek moment, I think. Okay. Okay. Aloha, Slicers. This is Stephanie from Oahu with your Geek Moment of the Week. Recently, my cousin and I went to a genre movie together. And like all good geeks, we faithfully waited through all of the credits for our tag at the end. We waited, the tag was great, and we snickered at all of the morons who had rushed out of the theater to get to their cars through the freakish chill of the Oahu night. Continuing to glory in our brilliant geekness, we got up and started strolling down the stairs, only to have all of the lights turned off on us about halfway down. Well, admittedly, it had been the last showing, and it was after 1 a.m., but I guess they don't have many geeks on staff at the theater because, let's face it, no self-respecting geek would ever leave the credits early anymore. Oh, one tip for you. Those little reflective lights running along the side of the chairs? Yeah. Don't count on them to work so well without anything to reflect. And that's been your Geek Moment of the Week. 
<laughs> it's oh, true. Awesome. You always got to wait nowadays. We were waiting at the end of MIB3 just in case, and a nice theater mm-hmm. employee came over to us and said there is no nothing at the end of the credits, oh, so we didn't nice. have to wait all the way through. Please oh. move along. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's what he was saying. Yeah. I, I was it. still amazed at how many people bailed at the end of Avengers. Right, crazy. I, know. I mean, Come it's like on. really. I mean, the, most of the theater got up. There's like five of us left in the uh-huh. and we're all looking at each other, going, "What?" Right. And, you know, we two. had a geek moment right there. Was there basically there was five people, complete strangers, sitting in the theater, looking and shaking their head at all the <laughs> idiots that were leaving the theater, going. And then, and then when we saw it, like half the people left after the first one because they right. didn't know there was a second one, so uh, they thought they'd, they'd gotten uh, it. Like, and ah, I was like, no, yeah, till so the, the very the Hulk, end. They had the one, uh-huh. the Hulk, and they had the one, and then it was over, and there was nothing left. So some people might but, have thought the that, same about but, I mean, Avengers. Co- but that's kind of the point, though. Like They've set kind of the precedent. Every single one has had something in the that's credits. True. Every yeah. one of them. See, now, I remember the very first movie that I saw that had that in the credits Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Mm. Yeah. What? Go. Get yeah, out of here. Are you, over. You're, you're still here? Go. Go home. Go home. <laughs> See, it, it's, it's over. It's just an evil plot to make us watch the credits. That's all well, it is. Well, there's cool works. stuff in the credits. All the IT people are at the oh, end. Oh, Production that. babies. Like, there's, you know, there's I love the production stuff babies. in there. I actually, yeah. I, I'm a credit watcher. It, it, I but really it goes am. back almost like with, with uh, Airplane. Uh, like, and they would put funny things oh, in yeah. the credits. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh-huh. I... Oh, the... Um, the uh, the the best whole- one is uh, uh, Holy Grail. I mean, right. yes. <laughs> right. Right. I like, all the out. credits were at the beginning of the movie. Right? <laughs> you know? right. Yes. Just saying. Hey, Slicers. Brian from Palo Alto. I was just listening to last week's news from Flight Test Land segment. It was mentioned that having a 90% reusable capsule would greatly reduce the cost of getting to space. Mm-hmm. If I were to reuse my plastic fork at 10 five-star restaurants, it would not significantly affect the price. Now, a launch vehicle is no plastic fork. But it does make me wonder how much of the many costs involved in getting to space are embodied in the launch vehicle. See, it's not an accurate. Uh, it's not an accurate comparison because you don't throw the forks away at those five-star restaurants. They wash them and reuse them, so they're already reusing them. Good point. So, mm-hmm. see, there you go. Busted. Point. Busted, right. Brian. You got to come up with a better one. Got to come up with a better one. Yep. Hey, slicers, Mike. Why would you want? Robert Downey Jr. to come and deliver the DVD to your door. Oh, dude. 15 minutes after he got there, you'd be looking around going, where's all the podcasting fluid? But he's freaking rich. He can buy me all the podcasting fluid I need. And hilarious. True. Absolutely. And worth it. And it'd be a blast to go shopping with him at BevMo. I mean, could you, <laughs> I mean, truly, could you imagine getting Robert Downey Jr. in the BevMo? I'm, it's terrifying. Ah, that's awesome. so wrong. I, I, I think that's the 14th step, isn't it? Something right? like that. Yeah. Much. Yeah. Right? That's so wrong. Poor like, Robert. Great. Hey, Splicers, Tim from the Babcast here. Oh, hey, wow. I've uh, What's up? watched the finale for Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. and I'm just wanting to say, if I hear one more person go, me, 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 that wasn't in the book, they left this out of the book, and me with the book, and I was like, <laughs> that's just another name I'm adding to my list of names that I'm going to offer up to the right God. <laughs> A man has had it. The show's great. A man just has had it. Off. It what? is awesome. It, it is. But I'm okay with the changes so far. Oh, Some people are I'm not. good with it. I, I'm good with all of it. I, I, I understand why they're compressing it, but uh, yeah, the way they're doing it is brilliant. Meh. As, Meh? As, Meh. Uh, you know what, Tim? Tim was dissatisfied. Our, uh, Tim Adamek. Yeah. Uh, well, I can just tell you that I used to do the Babcast with Tim, and you know what, brother? Solidarity. I'm with you. It's awesome. <laughs> it is. Just, the people should stop whining. Yeah, why don't you read the books, and then, no. you, can, then you can comment no. about it. Yes, no. yes. That's what you we're saying. You know why I don't want to read the books now? Zip, because this zip, is awesome. Zip. Don't ruin my zip. movie. <laughs> Got a big bag of zip. You mean zip. TV show? Whatever. Zip. Man, I'm about to go split screen on you two. <laughs> hey, Slicers. Rince Wind here. I had to laugh when I heard you guys talking about Elf last show. Elf, I used yeah. to like that show Elf. back in the day, but there was always Elf. something a little unsettling about it. Yeah. Think? I think I figured out what it is. That's part of the beauty. Do you remember the movie There's Something About Mary yes. and no. the Stiller Diaz hair gel scene? Dear God. Yes. Now look at a picture of Elf's hair <laughs> and Mary's hair. <laughs> you can't tell me there wasn't some pervy, furry activity going on <laughs> on that set. Hey, Willie, is that hair gel? <laughs> Bravo, Rinso. That was a pretty good impression. Yeah, that was a great damn. impression. <laughs> yeah, and Alf was a, was a dirty, dirty boy. You knew it. Dirty. Oh, absolutely. Man. Hey, guys. Rapid Eye here. Um, you guys talked about this movie. I don't ever remember it, but uh, 
I was flipping through channels and I landed on a an alien movie called Paul. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like, where have Paul. you been, I dude? Loved that movie. It's a great movie. We yeah. were talking. I talked about that movie for two shows. He it's did. Like, yeah. This is my this is my trifecta yeah, yeah, series yeah. now. Recorded it. Watched it off. Of, I recorded it on. Yeah. You own it. Why would you record it? Because it was on, and I didn't know I owned it. <laughs> and you own it. I didn't know. Anyway, Paul was funny. Yes. It was. I didn't it's like. I, it, I didn't like the beginning, but when I got into it, and then I was good. Absolutely. Yeah. It's I love a that movie. Uh, yeah, it's you know. Jason Bateman. It's fun. It. Simon Pegg. Yes, Simon Pegg. Yes, Nick Frost. Jason you bet. Bateman. Absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is Crazy Joe. Oh, me Heather too. Graham. Really. Sandra, the truck driver, met Roller Girl? Yes. That is awesome. <laughs> Dude, that's disturbing, yes. I, I missed uh, that. Yeah, she said she said Heather Graham, but I didn't think it was the actress. I thought it was an author, but that could just be me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, it was probably an author. All right. This is Crazy Joe. Listen, guys, I just heard the most disturbing news on the, the one of the most recent uh, sci-fi shows. What Tim gives up Mike his guns? Mike is adopted. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. my god! And I actually considered him a friend. <laughs> Everyone, get out of the studio. I didn't know he was one of those types. Yeah, <laughs> he's dangerous. He will kill you all. Get out before he takes one of those swords off the wall. I don't think he's a. Pod oh my god! Person. I feel so dirty. I can't <laughs> believe I actually considered him a friend. I didn't know he was a. He was one of those adoptees. <laughs> <sighs> Get out with your lives while you can. Don't, don't they have like a, like another door for you to walk in? Another drinking yes. fountain yeah, for exactly. you? Yeah, exactly. They you know, do. I, you're in yeah. the back of the bus, right? I am. Just it's, curious. It's okay. It's terrible. No, actually, he's not even on the bus. You're not he's, even on the bus. He has to run, run beside it. Behind. He's got to run behind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we are so out of time here. I, can't, I, I, I don't have time for any more no, of these no, things. No, uh, but no. one thing I did want to talk oh. about really quick, and Wait. I wanted to save a little bit of time for this, is that I, I got some questions on what's the deal with the shoe thing. With uh, oh. Sam, and we ha- we were remiss on not actually explaining well, I was just this. Just bringing it on people, exactly. So sexy. And, and I love it. It was actually working because I've yeah. got a lot of questions on it. It's like, what's going on with the shoes? Yeah, it was like, Lori's brain because idea. because yeah. Sam has like the most awesome taste in shoes, and she comes in some of the greatest shoes Shoe every alcoholic. single week. Jesus, Tim has alcoholic. his hats. Sam has her shoes. Absolutely. And they are just, they're, they're awesome. There was, there was some, some, how did it get to where you're some introducing late, the shoe? My, my understanding is some late night brainstorming session happened during Comic-Con amongst the men and gays and it, Jeffrey. It's called alcohol. It's called the drinking a lot. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Lori had the brilliant idea that there should be a little shoe segment. So we thought we'd wedge that in during the intro for so, uh, all, so the feedback for the show. Ex, so yeah. all the exits. We all have our shtick. Everybody right. has their shtick. Yeah. So I the get beginning a shtick now. I never had a shtick before. you do. Mike is adopted. Brad is face. an illiterate moron. <laughs> Megan is pathetic. Yeah, incompetent. <laughs> incompetent. <laughs> incompetent. Incompetent. There we go. Brian's a jerk. Uh, Brian is made of awesome. <laughs> Brian's a dick. <laughs> and, smells. <laughs> and he smells Brian funny. Brian makes people angry. Well, right. No, Tim actually makes people angry. Actually, no, you know, the funny thing is Tim says you the most You get blamed for Tim I thing. get blamed for it all. <laughs> you and you I'm really the most do. level-headed Tim of them all. Tim has hats and I yeah. have shoes. Yeah. That's uh, what happens. We, have, we all have our role to play. That's right. It's, it's, it's your cross to bear. Matt, you can also... Uh, Oh, speaking of which, mm. we need a stage name for Matt. No, I was just thinking of you know uh, the the Jesus Chewbacca thing that I wanted. Oh, but, you right. Know, um, but anyway, it's beside the point. Okay. <laughs> how, that, how that relates to Matt? We have no I idea. Don't know. No, we have idea. no idea. He's he's new here. He hasn't quite yeah. got a shtick yet. Yeah, the hazing will commence. Yeah, yes. oh, we'll, we'll get him a shtick later. <laughs> a walking shtick. Yeah, yeah, something like that. That's gonna do it for this show. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Bye. Later.